Now let's move on to the, the last stage, or what I call the fourth stage, which is the ultimate behavior, ultimate condition of our reinforced concrete beam, which implies that the concrete crushes in compression. And I consider this the most important because this is what we typically design to or design our reinforced concrete members to. And when we try to figure out any flexural capacity associated with our reinforced concrete members, we're looking at ultimate conditions where the strain in compression is equal to the ultimate strain of the concrete. And if you're using the ACI code, this is 0.003. And again, this is much like the cracking moment. This is a strain profile associated with a specific strain value. And when we calculate our theoretical moment capacity, it's going to be a so it's the moment associated with this 0.003 strain. And what we hope or assume for the steel is that it has gone well beyond its yield strain so that we have a, a structure that's responding ductally. Is that even a word, ductally? Anyways, so here, this is kind of a hope or an assumption that we make before our analysis process takes place. And, and based on our results of our analysis that we do, we can verify that this assumption is true. The thing to note here is that the materials are now nonlinear. The, co the compressive strain in the concrete at the top fiber has gone well beyond its proportional limit. And the steel, hopefully, has also gone well beyond its yield point. And because our strains have gone beyond their proportional limits or their yield points, our stress values or our stress profile has also become nonlinear and would actually look something like this. If you can imagine, you know, if this value here of strain has reached 0 0.003, the ultimate compressive strain, the stress profile has become nonlinear. And it kind of looks like the stress strain curve of, of concrete in, in that it's going to have its peak right about here. And our stress profile looks like this in compression. And this value, this distance over here, is FC prime. And our steel, this FS, assuming again that epsilon s is greater than epsilon y, then this FS, we're going to assume an elastic, perfectly plastic model, is equal to FY. And we're going to have a force resultant here. And the volume of this stress block would have a force compression force resultant. And that would be my equilibrium. And the moment associated with this, this m, is going to be our nominal moment, this mn value. Our analytical approach really is somewhat limited because our materials are nonlinear. So the assumptions that are the basis of the transformed area method are no longer applicable. You know, the transformed area method required a linear elastic material behavior. And so what we have to do in order to locate the neutral axis depth is apply equilibrium. And usually this equilibrium of forces is going to look like this this TS equal to CC. And then you're going to resolve this with the assumption steel yields. And once you calculate the neutral axis depth associated with this, you're going to be able to determine strain values. And now calculating the force resultant of this nonlinear paraboloid looking thing is actually pretty hard. And you're also going to use what's called the Whitney or equivalent stress block, which is a rectangular stress block that approximates this nonlinear stress profile for concrete. And once you have the CNA, you'll be able to calculate the nominal moment by moment equilibrium, which means you know taking moments about a point along this line or this section, this force profile. And so uh, typically, you know, people take moments about the for compression force resultant, and the location of this force resultant is the centroid of the stress block or this compression stress block, and this distance is the arm Z. And you take moments about that, and this MN would be equal to TS times Z. But there's more about that later. Anyways, this was a very long and involved explanation of our reinforced concrete beam behavior under load. Again, the most important stage, I would say, is this ultimate condition. The next is the cracked elastic section. And then the other two, the cracking moment, is third in an importance. And then the last but not least is the uncracked linear elastic. And normally, you know, that is 
is not a critical stage because most concrete is cracked in the elastic region during operation. I hope you're able to pick and choose and utilize the sections or parts of this video that are most helpful to you in either reviewing or relearning or all right take it easy and let me know if you have any questions see ya